Hi everybody, it's Franny, and we're taking a quick break from the 3.2 Carrera project to work on the 993. These rear brakes have needed to be replaced for quite a while. Our rotors are quite worn, and the car won't hold on a hill with a parking brake. So we're going to be tearing all of this apart, replacing pretty much everything. Our pads, our rotor, and even our brake shoes inside there for the parking brake. So it's kind of a lot of steps. So as usual, I've put together a full set of notes on each one of the steps. I find this really helps me stay focused and that way I don't forget a step. I have the car well jacked up and on jack stands. I also have my jack over there holding up the engine in the back just as a safety precaution and I even have the wheel underneath the car so I think we're pretty safe here. Our first step is going to be to pull our pads then we'll pull the caliper then the rotors then we'll disassemble the parking brake shoes that are in there and pull all that out and then reassemble is just pretty much the reverse, not a big deal. I think it's gonna be a fair bit of work, so let's get started removing those pads. A quick note of caution, make sure you wear gloves. The old brake pads, some of them actually had asbestos in them, so you wanna be careful about that. And of course, our safety glasses, because we've got pins and little clips and things to take out, we just don't want anything going crazy and going in our eyes. Taking a look at what we have in here, the red wire here is our brake wear sensor. We have new brake wear sensors, but we're gonna pull these out anyways, and they just simply pull out, supposedly. Yeah, see? Well, these wear sensors are really stuck in the top of those pads. And since we have a brand new set, we can always just cut them off. We're gonna be replacing the pads and the sensors anyways. So to speed things up a little bit, just go ahead and cut them off and move on from there. there we go, work the wire off. The next task is to remove this big clip here in the center holding the pads on. So we just sort of compress it from the center here like that and boom, and it comes out, pop, pop. Okay, get that clip off and out of the way. Okay, and that's what that clip looks like. It clips on like that and that. We're gonna need to disconnect our sensor wire, which is this one here. It's red at the bottom. Now, it's important to note also that we have a speed sensor here for the ABS brakes, and it also plugs into this little junction here. All right, so the one we wanna disconnect is this one, the red wire, not the sensor wire. There we go. Oh, there it is, okay. And that's our sensor wire removed. You didn't have to take it out of this cover. I just couldn't quite see what was going on in there. We're gonna unhook it here and up here as well. There we go. That's this wire here. There we go. All right, and now our sensor wire is free and looks like it was also captured by the little dust cover for the bleeder. Look at that. All right, so we just pop that off and there's yet another clip right here. So we gotta pull that one too. There we go, open. Now it's free, holy cow. Oh, there we go. With our sensor wire completely unhooked and freed, we now can get to the, our pads, which are right here. Now, step one in this, before we go and compress the pads, we wanna go up front and we wanna remove some of the brake fluid from the brake fluid reservoir up front. Because if we go squishing our pads and, and pushing the pistons back, we're gonna be pushing fluid back into that reservoir and it could overflow. Our next step is gonna be to compress the pads back back into the calipers a little bit, just to give us enough room to get these pads out. Our pads are loose here and they just won't come out. And the reason is that there is a little vibration damper here that's attached. It's actually got some sticky tape on it and it's attached right here. And this round bit goes inside the actual caliper in here. So that's what's holding this pad in. You can use like a putty knife or something and get in between this and pop this guy off. And then you'll be able to pull your pads out. Oh, look at that. We'll push them in even a little bit further. Okay, I think that's it. There we go. Will they come out? Yeah, well, looks like it. There we go. All right, there. That made life a little bit easier. Now take a look at the difference in the pad thickness, huh? Oh my gosh, yeah, these definitely needed to be replaced. We're definitely there. And even our wear marker here is starting to wear a little bit too. Look at that. We can see some marks on it. So it's definitely getting down to the point where these pads need to be replaced. Well, I wasn't quite so lucky on the inboard pads. 
I did have to separate the dampers in order to get them out. With the dampers separated, look at that, we can get our pad out pretty easily. These guys. I want to pull our other damper out. All right, and there it is. Now you want to be very careful with these in here because we've got our seals for our pistons. We want to be very careful with those. Well, that's it for the pads. And look, one of them was actually quite a bit thicker. This is the inboard one here, right here. And take a look at the thickness difference on that. Yeah, that's something, huh? So that means they've been sort of breaking unevenly anyways. That's not a good sign either. On the back side of our caliper are two 16 millimeter bolts we need to remove to remove our caliper. One here and then one up in here. A little hard to see up there. There it goes. Let's see if we can get this other one, which is up here. Oh, there we go. Okay. We'll leave that in just a couple turns. I'll loosen up our bottom one. Pull that out all the way. And the top one, we want to support the caliper here. We don't want it to fall. Pull the top bolt out. And you want to be ready with something to tie your caliper up. We're going to move it up, pull it off here, and move it up out of the way. Up here, I'm going to put a cloth here. And then I'm just going to tie it up, up here to the spring, I think. What we don't want is any strain on the flexible brake line here. So we don't want to hang our caliper down. All right, woohoo! Got the caliper off. And next step is going to be to get our brake rotor off. Our next step is going to be to remove our two Phillips screws here. It's really with all that's holding the rotor on. All right, let's see if we can get these guys off and if they'll cooperate at all. Oh, no, that wasn't too bad. Great. I'm using a number three Phillips on this. It seems to fit it quite well. All right, how about this one? There it goes. Oh, look at that. That wasn't bad at all. And notice there's no Loctite on these screws at all. Nothing. All right, well, in theory, this should come off now. We can use our plastic mallet to just sort of loosen it up a little bit, hopefully. Yep, it's moving. Oh, because it kind of jammed itself. There we go. Are you loose now? There we go. And that's it. All right. And that's all there is to removing the rotor. A little bonus project, if you're looking for just a little bit more to do, would be to remove this cover here, clean it, and paint it. It wouldn't be too hard to get off and kind of just sand it down, maybe give it a coat of paint. They tend to corrode really bad because the brake dust just eats these things. And while you're here, this is the time when you'd be able to get this thing off. So I'm going to pull this thing off, just sand it, shoot it with a quick coat of paint, no big deal. Now is also a great time to do some inspection in here. Taking a look at our joints here, making sure that the rubber booties on all these are not ripped. Also, our CV boots in the back here. You can turn the wheel over a bit. Just look for any splits or cracks or the telltale sign of grease flinging everywhere. Always a great time to do this because you've got access and you can see what's going on in here. Well, next we're gonna get to the brake shoes here for the emergency brake. Now these brake shoes actually look pretty good, but boy, this thing will not hold and I've adjusted it and it just, it just won't hold. So we have all new shoes. We'll go ahead and replace them. That with the new rotor hub in there. And I bet this thing will stop on a hill, which would be awesome. This bit in here gets a little bit complicated. We've got shoes, we've got springs, we've got a little adjuster over here. So, um, Heidi got me a new camera. It did like my other one. And what I'm gonna do is go through and take a bunch of pictures just so I've got them, just in case I get kind of confused when I'm putting back together. It's like, could this spring go on this side or that one? Eh. So we're just gonna take a bunch of pictures. One thing that is important is the orientation of the pads themselves. They're flat on one side and pointed on the other. So you wanna make sure you get a picture of pointed on one side and and flat on the other. First thing we wanna remove are the springs at the top and the bottom here that actually hold the pads in. So they don't do anything about the pads expanding and contracting. They just hold it to the wheel carrier here. Now I'm gonna be replacing all of the springs and this is the little guy that we're 
trying to pull out here. It has a hook on the bottom of it, and we're just gonna grab the top of it and push it in and work it to where we can pull our hook out. All right, there we go. That's off. Our next step is gonna to be to remove the spring over here on the three o'clock position. There we go. Just gonna loosen that up, pull our spreader out. All right, we've got our spreader out, our adjuster out. This is a great reason why you would take pictures because, yep, once that spring let loose, the whole thing went crazy. Everything came off. Here's our other spring that's on the other side. And also good to see how the spring went in. Take a look at that. That's kind of interesting. The spring sits flush here, but on the other side, it's kind of weird. It looks like this. Well, looking at our pads here, they're... There's not a lot of use on them, I can tell, but it looks as though somebody probably has driven this car with the parking brake on. That's so common, right? That's really what destroys these things. They get kind of glazed over and they're kind of a mess. This is the actual mechanism here from the parking brake itself, and we'll probably be lubing this up a little bit. There's no need to really take it off unless the cable's damaged and our cable is just fine. Yep, everything seems okay in there. That's good. And it's all nice and loose, which is great. With everything disassembled, we're going to go ahead and clean everything now. I'm just using some brake cleaner and just going to kind of swab it down a little bit here. Got a bucket underneath here to catch all the yuckies. And while we're cleaning here, we'll want to hit this surface with a little wire brush action here just to knock off any rust that's on here. If it's really bad, you may have to use a like a power tool with a with a wire brush on it. Just for comparison on our old shoes and new shoes, looks like the new shoes are just a little bit more narrow, huh? Not quite as wide. Uh, the thickness of the material looks like it might actually be even a little bit less. Uh, it's just modern parts, I suppose. But the ends are correct. So we've got a pointy end on one end and we've got a straight end on the other. And that's the most important bit. This is our little star adjuster. I completely took it apart and cleaned it. It wasn't that bad actually, but I am gonna lubricate these threads with a little never sleaze. We're gonna run it all the way down to make putting in our pads a little easier. Now in the slot on the top and the bottom of this thing, we also want to add a little bit of never sleaze to that so that our pads as they move around in there will have just a little bit of lubrication. There's also a few little silver spots on here that I think the pads are actually gonna run on. I'm gonna put a little bit of never sleaze and we're talking just a kiss, just just the lightest little surface on there. I have a new set of springs here. Our old ones were fine, but I already ordered these, so I'm gonna go ahead and install them. As I was fitting the brake shoes, I ran into a bit of kind of a stupid problem. Here, let me explain. The problem is that our slot here and our adjuster won't fit, won't fit over the pad. So I'm gonna to have to grind these down just a tad in order to get this to work means I'll have to do the same thing for the top, so off they come. Let me go grind these down a little bit so this guy will actually fit on here. Neither side will actually, so these pads are just a little too thick here. That's kind of crummy. These are supposed to be OEM parts too. Mm, not so much, huh? Let me go ahead and ground these down. I'll be right back. This stuff is driving me crazy. Take a look at that. See how much shorter that is? That's not good. That's not going to work. And when I, so when I compress this guy, it just doesn't get long enough. So let's go ahead and try the original and see if we can get that one in. Yeah, there it goes. It was super easy. Yeah, okay. All right, well, the old part went right back in. The new part, not so much. It's just too short. Gosh, so that's two problems we've had with these, that the pads needed to be ground and looks like these springs are just, look at how much shorter that thing is. You line it up at the bottom there, look at that. It's just quite a bit shorter.
Well, I think I got it. Take a look from the other side. The hook is right there, and it just needs to be hooked around the outer edge there. Well, next step is to install our new brake rotor. Now this is made by a company called Zimmerman and they have a special coating on it. See that? It's kind of a grayish coating, looks really nice. Well, I was reading the instructions which were actually really hard, they were pretty damaged and hard to read. But they say don't use any type of, of lubricant here at all. Maybe the lightest thing of oil and that's about it. But the Porsche manual says that you should put a very thin film of Never Seize on these. So I think they're just worried if you put too much, it's gonna fling out and it's gonna get into the parking brake and the parking brake's not gonna work or even worse, it'll fling out into the actual disc itself. I think they're just being abundantly cautious and that's a great thing, but I am going to add a little bit of Never Seize on here. The old ones came off pretty easily, but still, but I'm gonna be very, very thin, just just paint it on there. I'm gonna orient this so that our two screw holes are kind of here so we'll know where they are. So we'll line this up so that, there we go, like that. Looks pretty good. And remember, these weren't super duper tight. They just basically sort of hold it on. Of course, all the torque is carried by the lug bolts. To take this opportunity to clean our brake rotor a bit. Our next step's gonna be to remount our caliper. Well, it is a little dirty, so let me go ahead and get something to clean all this off with. We're ready to reinstall our caliper. It's all nice and clean. Porsche recommends that you replace the caliper bolts each time when you take these things off and put them back on. So this is the original one. It has a 16 millimeter head on it, and this is the replacement for it. And then take a look at that. It's a tad longer. Hopefully that's not going to be an issue, but it's actually an 18 millimeter and this was a 16. So boy, parts change quite a bit. Anyway, all right. So we're gonna put our caliper in place and put our new bolts in. One thing I do wanna mention is that you need to push your pistons all the way in if they're not already all the way in. We pretty much pushed them all the way in when we took the pads out, but if they're not completely in, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble getting the new pads in. There we go, that's one of them. There's the other one. You gotta just push them in by hand. It's not really that hard to push them in. Go ahead and fit our caliper back. And the torque for these bolts is 85 Newton meters or 63 foot pounds. So I've got my torque wrench all set. Let me go ahead and torque these in. All right, that's that one. There we go. All right. There's our two caliper bolts torqued in place. Yay. Well, remember these little guys are little vibration dampers that this part actually goes into a hollow in the actual caliper piston. Well, these are my replacements and they've got a sticky back on them, so that's great. But take a look at this. Look at the difference in the size. Uh, there were two different sizes to these things and I, we couldn't figure out which was the correct size. While I was cleaning the other dampers, take a look at this. What do you see? This one's bigger and this one's little. So <laughs> it takes one big one and one little one. Gosh, I would have never known that. There wasn't anything in the parts catalog and working with the guys at Auto House AZ that nothing really specified that there's a big one and a little one, but to check that out, they're still attached to the pad that I was able to get out. Wow, well, that's, that, <laughs> that's quite the surprise. All right, at any rate, let me go ahead and get the other ones off of here and we'll see what we can do about getting these pads back in. I lost the day yesterday, so we're starting over. It's the next day. What we have left to do here on this side is to install our pads. These guys here, brand new set of pads. Look how thick those things are. 
wow, super thick. And our little vibration dampers. So for installation of these guys, they've got a sticky bit on the back. So what I did was I actually pulled these off the old pads and then I just used a little bit of very thin double-sided sticky tape and we're all set here. I just need to pull the backing off of this. But I got to thinking about it. I thought, well, why don't we just go ahead and mount them to the actual pads where they go like that. And I've got the old ones, a picture of the old ones, so I could just take a look and where they go. But the problem is you'll never get them in. You'll never get them in here. They won't go. So I think the only way to install these things is going to be to remove the backing on them, go ahead and press them into place inside the hole inside the piston here, and then slide the pads in. I think that's the only way to do it. If you know of a better way to do it, go ahead and leave your suggestion down in the comments and let me know, but it's the only way I can really figure to do this. I'm gonna start by removing the adhesive backing here on these guys so they're all ready to go. And the little one goes up top and the big one goes on the bottom and it's gonna be a little tricky. You don't wanna get your fingers all over it, but just kinda of go in the hole there. All right, and we're gonna do that for the bottom one as well. Kind of helps if you spin it in a little bit. That helped it seat. Now onto our pad. There are a couple of sort of bearing surfaces, I guess, or wear surfaces, sort of the top here in two little places here and same thing on the bottom. We're gonna throw a little never sleeves on there just to give them a little bit of lubrication. And now we can just slide our pad in. Try to keep it close to the rotor so that you don't get stuck on those dampers as you're going in. All right, there we are, all the way in. And I'm just gonna leave those loose one of the things we'll do at the end is to push on the brake several times to get the pistons out and up against the pads. And that'll be a great time for the sticky backing on those dampers to actually attach to the pads. All right, and the other side's just like that. So let me go ahead and get that done. Okay, that's our new pads in. With our new pads in, let's go ahead and put in our new wear sensors. They just push right in, nothing super special about that. Goes snap-a-doodle, that thing goes over there like that. And then we just compress our little clip here. We we'll wanna make sure that our clip is securely underneath this little tongue here. And that looks good, and that our wires aren't pinched. They look awesome. Now it's just a matter of rerouting our sensor wire back to the plug back here. Let's go ahead and get that done. And then finally, we have one more clip to install here. It goes around the big, huge retainer clip, like that, slides up to the top, and then the end of it clips over here, the end of this guy, just like that, just like that. And that holds our wire in place, and that's it. That brake is done. And the last thing we need to do is to just get in the car and pump the brake pedal several times just to sort of expand the pistons out and get the pads up against the rotor. And there's another thing we need to do and that is to adjust our parking brake. The parking brake should start to engage after the second click. So it should go click, click, and then you should start feeling it. And that adjustment is done through this hole and looking at, remember our star adjuster is over here on the right side, we have to go in there and we have to move our star adjuster to expand the pads out enough to seat up against the inside of our rotor. Okay, so we're turning our little tines here. There, you can kind of hear it click. So that little clicky noise that you're hearing in there is the actual retaining spring for our shoes. And it runs right over the tines on the adjuster and it helps keep the adjuster from spinning free. Okay, I can feel it. I think it's starting to seat a little bit. Yep, it feels like it's getting a little harder to turn. And I'll bet this is pretty well locked. Yep, yeah, it sure is. Now we're gonna back it off. It'll turn again, there we go. There are two possibilities for adjusting this. You can either tighten it up by turning the time towards the front of the car until it stops and then back it off five turns or you can tighten it by pushing it towards the front of the car until you can't turn the rotor anymore and then back it off two notches. 
We're still turning here, so let me go ahead and tighten this. One more notch. Oh, we're just about to the point where it won't turn. One more. All right, that's that. Okay, so now it won't turn. I'm gonna back it off two notches. One, two. You can hear the little clicks in there, and it should turn now. There we go, it does. Yay! Okay, well that's it. Our pads are seated and our parking brake is adjusted. So we're all done with this wheel. Woohoo! Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other wheel. It's exactly the same process. And then after I get done with the wheel over on the right side of the car, we're gonna go through and bleed the brakes because I don't think they've been done in a while and we need to do that as well. With our brakes all finished, the last thing I really want to do on the car is a complete brake fluid flush. Pretty simple, straightforward process. I did a video on the 996 brake, so it's pretty much be the same sort of thing. I'm going to use a motive power bleeder and pressurize the vessel here and just pull the fluid out from each of the four corners. Our first step in this process is going to be to remove what's left of the fluid in the reservoir. You just don't want to flush that old brake fluid through so we can get a head start and pull it out first. The service manual calls for Super Dot 4 for this car. So we've got some here and this is a nice fresh bottle. I'm going to go ahead and fill the reservoir all the way up. In fact, as far as it, I can get it because we're going to be pulling quite a bit of fluid out and the last thing I really want is this reservoir to run dry. Remember that these are dual chamber reservoirs, so just keep an eye on both chambers. I've had an instance where I thought I had plenty of fluid in there, but it was really the other side of it that was draining down and draining down and draining down. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So I almost caused a big mess with that. We've got our reservoir full of fluid. Our next step is going to be to pressurize the system. Now I use a motive power bleeder here. Let's go ahead and attach this and pump up to 15 PSI. We just screw the adapter from the motive power bleeder onto the top of our reservoir. Simple enough. Since our car is a very early 95 car, we also have this vent that you can see running around here. Now we're going to have to crimp that off or we'll never be able to build pressure. So I'm just going to use a little pair of hemostats and that takes care of that problem. We're pumped up on our gauge here to 15 PSI or one bar. All right, well, we're all set to start our bleeding. Now we're gonna be bleeding the cylinders the furthest away first. So you start in the farthest wheel and work your way towards the master cylinder. So on this car, that's right rear, then left rear, right front, and then 
left front. So let's get back to that right rear wheel and go ahead and bleed it out. We're going to be bleeding out at least 250 milliliters from each wheel. That's what the service manual said to do for a full flush. Anything above 250 is fine. We don't want to go too awfully crazy. We want to keep an eye on our reservoir and make sure that we don't run dry. The bleeder on these calipers are 10 millimeter. So we'll put our tube on here. All right. So we can crack this guy open. Why oh, they're tight. They shouldn't be quite that tight. There we go. And there's our fluid flowing through. Now we're looking for any bubbles at all in the system, but I'm not seeing any, which is a good thing. And the brake pedal was good and hard. It was just time for the fluid to be drained in the car. Well, that was absolutely taking forever. I'm not sure exactly why. I pumped it up as far as it would go to 15 PSI. It was still just barely trickling out, but time to call in the ringer. So Heidi is gonna get in and do the traditional pump, pump, hold method. And I think that's gonna get us through this a lot faster. So, all right, well, let's hope this goes a little bit faster. Heidi is up in the car. So what I'm gonna have her do is she's gonna pump, pump, and then hold. What I'm gonna do is break this loose, open this up, let the fluid flow until it stops, then I'll close it off, and then we just repeat until we've got enough fluid. So we're closed at this point. All right, I think we're all ready to start. Heidi, go ahead and pump, pump, hold, please. All right, we'll close that off. Go ahead and pump, pump, hold, please. Oh, it's just slow and super painful. Oh, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> well, to help speed things up a little bit, take a look at our bottle there. See that tube in the center? As soon as the fluid gets up to that level, there's no chance we're going to get any air back into the bottle. So at that point, I can have Heidi just continue pumping. Pump, 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 pump. And she'll literally be pumping the fluid straight through. It works great and it's way faster. Well, we've got our 250 milliliters here. I think we're great. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this off. All right. We can remove the tube on our bleeder. Just wanna be careful not to get any brake fluid anywhere. There we go, pull that off. All right, and we can put our little dust cover back. And that's pretty much it. We also have another bleeder on the inboard side, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull a little fluid out of that as well. I think that's plenty of fluid to have flushed the entire lines there. So we've pulled well over 250, we're almost halfway to 500 milliliters there. So I think we're pretty good here. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this off. And then they suggest that for the first 150 miles that you go pretty easy on the braking. There's like a bed in period for the pads and also for the discs themselves. You know, 150 miles or so, just take it easy. Don't go crazy, don't go slamming on the brakes. Unless, of course, you have an emergency, then probably you should. All right, well, that's pretty much it for bleeding the brakes. We're gonna, of course, do the other three wheels, but it's the same process, and I'm not gonna bore you with all of that. And finally, we wanna remember to just top off the fluid in the reservoir. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and you know I'll get right to them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that now. Hit the little bell next to it to be notified because you're not gonna wanna miss any of the content we've got on the channel. We're still working on the 3-2 Carrera. We've got a few more episodes to do on that. We've got an interior to do. Then we're gonna do a sort of a beautification of the whole car. Go ahead and buff it, make it look pretty. And then we're gonna bring you the money we spent on that car. And that's going to be something to watch. Then we're gonna move on to the Ferrari. So we've got a lot of suspension work to do on that car, some interior work, and some other little bits and bobs around the outside as well to do. All right, well, thank you so, so much. And as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.